On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed back to western Pennsylvania to visit the Urane household. Get ready to take a peek at a very rare velvet buck, listen to some hunting stories, and a taxidermy studio loaded with antlers. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Whitetail Cribs episodes. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. Hi, I'm Pearl. This is Kenley. And I'm Justin. We're, We're the Urans, and welcome to our crib. This is our living room. It's where we spend most of our time together. Little one with her... Buck, buck. Or buck, buck. Go check out the kitchen. All right, the fridge where everybody likes to see basic uh, deer sticks, deer burger, venison roast, beer, and sweet tea. Gotta love it. I think I'm going to carry one along for the ride. This is my um, favorite tree to do in the house, the den tree. It's the only thing I get to touch in the den room. Um, got some sheds from the years. A cardinal, it's one of my favorites. Some bolts. Just got into hunting this year, so had to throw a little bit in there of mine. Um, came home one day to my first buck being the tree topper. So that was killed this year. Uh, first day of gun, about a 115 yard shot. And it was an instant kill as my first one, so. All right, I guess we're gonna go over to my first buck. This is my first buck from uh, 2004. 14 and uh, was able to harvest him with my bow um, he was a uh, he was a little bit of a scrapper he uh, liked to try to bully all the other deer on the farm and we had pictures of him out the out the wazoo but he uh, he was got a little junk I mean he had an injury on his left uh, left rear foot it was a little swelled up and he ended up having some type of infection so I actually couldn't even eat the meat but uh, he ended up being pretty cool he's a really pretty mount and uh, he ended up being being a nine point. So then we'll go on to my next one. This was last year's uh, 2018 archery kill, and I actually mounted this deer myself. Um, it was just a, another fun bow kill. That's why I love I love bow hunting. Just love being one with nature and being in a tree that time of year. You can't beat it. That, that eight point up top, he is my first Ohio deer and my first first Ohio deer on my lease with a bow. And nothing real special about him. He was just a rutted up buck that I had no trail camera pictures of. He'd come in and I got lucky. I mean, he's not the biggest deer in the world, but he was, he was a fun harvest just like any of them are. Um, this giant here is my dad's, my dad's actual buck. He, uh, he killed that one on our Southern Ohio lease and it's a gross Boone and Crockett. And I've never seen a guy so tickled pink to kill a whitetail. That one up here, he's my 10 point. I shot him um, two years ago on our Ohio property. And a crazy story about him, he, uh, when I shot him, he ran full, full, or full tilt into a crabapple tree. And he busted his right G3 and G4 off. And I actually had to repair the tines because he, he blew him right off his head. Uh, so that was a little bit, and actually that night it was when I brought him home was the same night I found out my wife was pregnant with our daughter. So that's, that's a huge story behind that deer, and I'll always cherish that deer every time I look up at him. Then we'll skip over that one for last, and we'll go to this one. This was a couple years ago, my first bow kill on a, a new property of ours in PA. And uh, once again, I mean, October, early October deer, fun bow hunting weather, so you're not freezing cold. And... Uh, 
Just a, just a nice uh, Pennsylvania eight point. Well, to finish it up, this uh, velvet buck here. He is my dad's pride and joy, and I hate to say it, but probably my pride and joy too. I was able to mount this deer and bring him back to life. We have hours and hours of history with this deer. Um, he was a four and a half year old buck on our property in Pennsylvania. He stayed, he was in full velvet. He was a four and a half year old. The year before we have trail camera photos and he was completely hard horned. Um, he ended up having a testicular injury, so which made him not have the uh, testosterone levels as like a normal buck. He basically was like a big doe. He didn't want, even want to be around the bucks. He had no, like I said, no testosterone to make him aggressive or wanting to push around it to, to assert dominance or anything like that. So my dad, it's a, the whole story behind it. I was in Southern Ohio hunting and my dad called me and was like, hey, we nicknamed this deer Splitter. Hey, Splitter's out in the field and he's still in velvet. Why would he still be in velvet October 2nd? So I got on Google, like all us millennials are doing nowadays, just got on my smartphone, Googled it, and it said, well, it could be cryptorchidism, which means his testicles never descended fully, so he never bred, he never fully matured as a male deer. So it said the only way you can really hunt them is to hunt them like a white-tailed doe. So my dad, being the, the crazy hunter that he is, he uh, scouted the next day in the morning, found two trails and found one tree that he could get in that they were coming out to the soybean field in. He climbed up with two screw steps, the limbs, and a safety harness. No stand, no nothing. He got up in there and shot him right in the evening, made a perfect shot with his Matthews, and the, the rest is history. I was able to mount him and I entered him into my first show down at the, Man at the Mansfield Taxidermy Show in the state of Ohio, and I, able, I was able to blue ribbon with him. And uh, he turned out amazing. I mean, he's, he was a blast to put together and a blast to be there for when he uh, was able to harvest them and get his hands on them. And we got some sheds. And those sheds were from a buck that we uh, had a ton of history with. We nicknamed him Poser. I missed him as a, uh, as a two-year-old. These are his three-year-old sheds. And we found a match set, but it was a sad story because the following year we had him and he blew up into an absolute giant. He blew up into a Boone and Crockett whitetail and uh, all of a sudden he just disappeared. And it ended up that we found out right after, shortly after the season started that he, uh, he was poached. They found him shot with a small caliber and now he's mounted in the uh, game commission's office in Franklin. But I must say it was a heck of a whitetail to chase and go after and I mean, it was a, a chapter that was hard to swallow when we found out that he was poached by an ignorant hunter. But, I mean, such is life, and here we are in 2019 rolling, and hopefully we get a bigger one on the wall. Now, we'll step out to my, my shop and where I spend majority of my time. I'm also a taxidermist, so I end up, this is my area out here. I, uh... I'm busy all the time now. I got a full-time job, but I come home and this is my relaxing hobby. I love putting them back together. I love bringing them back to life. And as you can see, this time of year, I, uh, I'm pretty busy. So uh, it's just a fun thing to do. And I love seeing the reactions on hunters' faces when they come to pick them up, especially young kids. I have a couple, couple kids' first deer on this rack and they're actually better than some of the big deer. When these young kids come in and they see they see my work and they, they smile ear to ear. That's what makes it for me. And that's why I do what I do and I love every second of it. We got some whoppers in this year. Um, I got some of the biggest eight points that I've ever seen. I mean, I got one here, just come in. It was killed, killed midweek in the second week of gun in Pennsylvania. And it is 155 and 3 8 inches. Maybe if I can get them down here. He is an absolute giant. Um, one of my good buddies, a real good friend of mine, and my dad, he actually used to coach me in football. He uh, is on our, our lease in Southern Ohio. He killed a 13 point this year and I was there for the recovery for it. And uh, he's gonna be a fun one to put together. He had a real orange forehead, really beautiful cape, and he was a 13 point taped out at 158. But, uh, so this is some of the quality that I'm chasing down on my property in Ohio. I mean, I eat, sleep, and breathe whitetails. So as I mean, as you can see, 
My dad actually got me started into it, but I played college football, so I didn't get a lot of time hunting growing up young, playing sports my whole life. So as soon as I got out of college, it was on. Me and my bow, and we're in a tree in the fall. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, got a big eight point from Wisconsin, had a 24 inch inside spread. A little busted up, but I mean, beautiful eight point. And got some local deer. Um, I actually this year was fortunate enough to receive deer from five different states. I mean, I got deer in from, from Wisconsin, from Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and then I've got one from, uh, from Missouri this year, So, which is pretty cool getting to see all the different whitetails because they're, they're like snowflakes. Every single one is different. I mean, it's, it's the coolest thing in the world. And then we'll talk about this one. This is a, my dad's Ohio buck from this year from 2018 on our property in Southern Ohio. And it's kind of a little bit of a surprise. I'm gonna mount it for him for Christmas. I'm gonna get it done, so I'll show up to Christmas dinner with it, and that's his present for this year. So hopefully he'll be tickled pink. I was hoping to get it done by the time you guys come in here, but uh, I got a little swamp skin and head, so. But actually tonight, Cameron, he uh, brought me in a deer that he actually hit early in the season, and couldn't come up with it so he ended up bringing it to me tonight and actually I'm going to use his cape from his Ohio whitetail to bring this guy back to life for him um, real tall G2s and like I tell everybody I'm going to bring, bring him back to life and make sure he looks really really good honestly today I got a bunch in this afternoon and so I got more work to do but I cherish every second of it and actually got one in, it'll be pretty cool. No rack on her head, but he's actually a uh, piebald doe. Really cool markings, and she'll be really cool to put together. Nice Roman nose on her, I have to rebuild with some clay, but. Well, and then I got my uh, my first ever bear that I'm actually completing as a taxidermist. I, I'm doing this, it's a bear rug, it's shot, it was shot in Ontario, Canada, which is pretty cool. I mean, getting to see these animals from all over the country and all over the, the continent, I should say, is a, uh, is very very humbling I should say is that my name's getting out there that much um, other than that I mean it's pretty cool and if keep me in mind I mean Uran's Whitetail Taxidermy you can look me up on Facebook Instagram any of that um, and the guys at Exodus Trail Cameras I mean this is pretty cool that uh, they gave me the opportunity to come look at my crib and see all the all the whitetails here like I said I eat sleep and breathe whitetail hunting and whether it's with a bow or a gun, it doesn't matter. I, I love being in the woods and I'm glad to incorporate my family into the hunting lifestyle now. So I guess we'll take a walk back through and head on out. Well, I don't know where you guys are going or where you gotta be, but you need to get the hell out of here. All right, I gotta get back to work anyway. See you guys.